Debo Samuel has officially requested a trade should the New York Jets pursue. Let's talk about it. Hey, what's going on? I'm Matt O'Leary back with another video. And today I'll be talking about, well, Debo Samuel officially asking to be traded from the San Francisco 49ers. Before we get started today, I just wanted to mention that you could follow me on social media at Matt O'Leary and why on well, everywhere on social media, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, wherever uh, you can subscribe to the Just Jets podcast. New episodes are dropping every single Monday during the season. They drop midweek so we can talk about the games. You guys know the drill at this point. And then the Patreon bonus Jets content over there. Make sure to check it out for Jets analytics, write ups and a whole lot more. OK, so Debo Samuel has asked to be traded. Supposedly, it, it's not that the 49ers aren't willing to pony up and pay him. It's he just doesn't want. To be there anymore, which I guess I could kind of see. Like, obviously, in his third year, last year was his third year in the league. It was his most productive year as he went for essentially 1,800 all purpose yards and 14 touchdowns. But he wants to be a true wide receiver, not so much a hybrid wide receiver and running back. And I could kind of see why, from his perspective, that he would want that. The likelihood of getting injured or just the durability or the ability to last in this league by essentially getting the touches that he was getting last year and, you know, projected to get going forward is too much. You can't have him be a 1400 yard wide receiver with six receiving touchdowns, which is great numbers, by the way, but then also essentially run for another 400 yards and add eight more touchdowns on top of that. It's just not necessarily sustain. No, even, yeah, no, eight. My math was right the first time, not a math show. Um, but, a lot of the things that I see is you can't possibly trade for Debo Samuel. He is hurt far too much. He missed one game last year due to a groin. He did have a hamstring injury in 2020 that kept him out for a little bit. But pretty much in, in his rookie year, when he came into the league, he was productive and played pretty much every single week. I think it was 15 games. This past year, he only missed the one game. So I'm not really that concerned with the one out of the three years having a little bit of an injury history, uh, especially if he's looking to transfer away from being the dual threat guy and being more so just a wide receiver. And I understand some people say, well, doesn't that take away some of his value? I guess in theory, but I would still think that Mike LaFleur would know how to use Debo Samuel. Uh, obviously, uh, both Salah and LaFleur know Debo pretty well from their time with the 49ers before coming over to the New York Jets. Lincoln Tomlinson makes his way over from the 49ers to the New York Jets. Uh, the Jets have the assets to get something like this done. They have four picks in the top 40. Some of these other teams who are potentially rumored to be in the mix don't nearly have as much uh, trade assets. For example, the Indianapolis Colts, they don't have the, they don't have a first round pick because of the Carson Wentz trade. Uh, maybe the Kansas city chiefs could get involved. That would be a, a team that would scare me, but like, I don't know. I don't necessarily see the Colts or maybe the saints could, I guess too, with, uh, their, their picks. But I really think that they're trying to, uh, trade up for an offensive lineman. So I think I'd be surprised if they ended up doing that. But moral of the story here is one, it's a fit because the Jets have been looking for a wide receiver all off season long. They had a package that was accepted for Tyreek Hill. They've checked in on Calvin Ridley, and I believe they are going to be in the mix here. But supposedly the asking price is astronomical for Debo Samuel, which I get. But it really just is kind of dependent on what happens. These things develop quickly. And as of right now, maybe they don't want to move him, but Will they be willing to take that risk, um, you know, on draft night or a couple of days before the draft and say, hey, we're going to keep our guy who's not exactly thrilled uh, to be here uh, instead where I could probably get the most value for him at this point. Now, I think the Jets could still find a way to make a trade and not have it um, not, not give up pick 10. Um, sure, they probably are looking for that, but if you threw, let's say, a package of something like pick 35 and pick 38, so both second rounders, which is essentially the same value as pick 15, it's actually a little bit more than that, uh, and pick 111, that's a trade uh, on the trade value chart, that's a value of 1,142. For context, Devontae Adams was traded for a first and a second, which was valued at 1,150. Tyreek Hill was at 1,092 for this year and another fourth and sixth on top of that. Don't know what next year's value is on the on the valuation this year, but I would imagine that it's probably not the uh, the hundred 
points to make up the difference there. So I think value wise, you're probably pretty close. Would I do it for pick 69 instead of 111, the third rounder? I would. I'd be comfortable pulling the trigger on that. Yes, I know it's giving up a lot, but because you have a pick at pick four and pick 10, you can move out of one of those picks and recoup some value, whether it's a later first round pick or a second round pick, whatever it is. You could see teams like potentially, I mentioned the Saints have multiple picks. Maybe they want to get up in four and get the offensive tackle of their choice and jump in front of the New York Giants who are definitely taking a tackle at pick five. Maybe it's the Steelers. They want to come up and draft the quarterback. Can they get all the way up to four? Maybe not, but can they get up to 10? Yeah, that seems pretty likely. So there's ways for the Jets to recoup value if they do decide to do a trade like this and give up the pieces. And as I've said before on this channel, on live streams, wherever, the Jets are in a rare spot because they have a rookie quarterback on his rookie deal where he's going to be extremely cheap. Um, Usually, you don't have the luxury of being able to give up these draft assets to get a deal like this done and then pay a guy like Debo Samuel the $25 million a year, let's say, because you are paying your quarterback $40 million a year. The hope is that in three or four years, Zach Wilson is making $40 million a year. That means he's panned out, but... While he is still developing, number one, you want to give him all the weapons possible to make his life easy so that he can become that elite level quarterback. And number two is you don't have to pay. You're paying pennies on the dollar for your quarterback. And if he's good, which, again, getting a player like Debo is only going to make things easier for him, then you could survive paying the twenty five million dollars because your quarterback is making a a half of that or whatever it is for for Zach. So um, I think the Jets should pull a move like this off. Is it likely? I don't know if I'm willing to say that just yet. But as I said, things rapidly change. It's the NFL from day to day. This stuff changes overnight. So let me know what you think of Debo. Should the Jets trade for him? Comment below. Get after me on social media. By the way, I didn't mention this at the top. Probably should have. One week from today, the NFL draft. So myself, Ryan, and Green Bean over on Jets Talk 24-7 will be live streaming all three days. Make sure to check it out. You'll see our reaction to every single Jets pick. We'll talk about each pick. There's a ton of special guests coming on on day two and day three, and we're going to get after it, man. It's our third year doing this. I'm thrilled about it. So make sure to check that out. Subscribe here if you're new, and I'll talk to you next time.